In today's episode, the budget PCP build goes tactical. Yeah, tactical. It's so clever. Tactical. Because it's like cool, but it's tactical. So it's tactical. Oh, God. Hey everyone, remember me? Yeah, it's that Nick Bending guy. He used to post videos quite often and then he's been on sort of a break. Yeah, sorry about that. Life sucks. Right. Budget PCP build. I want to address a few little problems that I've had with it. One very short little dovetail here to attach sights onto. And two, we've got the barrel flex that, uh, you know, we've looked at pre or mentioned previously. Uh, my mate who built the budget bell target rifle, he added another barrel band. And what I thought is, well, you know, let's stick three on. Why not, eh? So, you know, yep, you've got the three barrel bands on there. It'll still move a bit. Let's brace it. A piece of weaver rail. Now, of course, the holes aren't going to be in the right place, so I'll have to re-drill them. Step one. Work out where to put the holes in the weaver rail. What I'm going to do is have the back of the rail level with the end of the barrel band. So we're going to have to work out where to put the holes. So measure from the back there. Sixteen point five millimeters. Transfer that across to the rail, mark it out, drill it, and off we go. They always awkward measurements to then divide by two. Sometimes a good cheat is to just see if it works out to something easy, and yeah, that'll be a no then. Okay. Fifteen point six eight. So divide that by two, cross the line, drill it out, and that's the first hole drilled. Great bit of kit. Heartily recommend these. Save smacking around with a hammer. Now the machine screws that uh, fit those barrel bands are M4, so I'm actually going to use a 4.5 millimeter drill bit just to give a little bit of clearance around the hole. I'm not showing drilling the holes because my pillar drill, as you may remember from a previous video, is seriously loud. And who wants to watch me drill a hole? Okay, so the holes are bored out and countersunk. As well. I will be using some aluminium black a bit later on just to tidy it up. Now when I was using the uh, three millimeter drill bit earlier on to drill the initial hole, God knows what this stuff is made out of. It's pretty hard. The uh, four millimeter glided through but yeah that's uh, that was some difficult going really for aluminium so all credit to you whoever made this. You use some decent stuff. So here, here we have the uh, sort of initial build-up. That bracing Picatinny weaver rail on top there. So now I've got to work out where to drill the hole for the centre barrel band. And also underneath, ended up with these two holes here. Initially I thought, shall I just wind something into that, like a couple of studs or something like that? And I thought, well, you know, why not stick another rail underneath? So what I'm going to do is have that, so the back of the rail is almost touching the wood. Use that to position this rear rail. And then work out where to drill the hole for this front rail. Front rail for that front barrel band there. 
through this to secure it. So I won't take you along for that, I'll just show you each stage as we go because I'm sure you can all work out how to mark out and how to drill holes. I don't really have to patronise you. Well, this is the stage we're up to now. Ignore the fly. Yeah, horrible little... Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure you can see a little problem. So the front edge of this is now blocking the filler port. So what we'll do is we'll cut it here so that it's all in line. And then we'll have to trim down the screw lengths so that they're not sticking out because obviously they're too long now. That's top and bottom. But I'm sure you can see the look that I'm going for here. Kind of took inspiration from, well, I don't know really. I think what it was really was how light this stock is the sort of light beach look to me it maybe this is just my twisted imagination has a look of something like a, an m49 to it a rifle which i have to say i really do like so i thought i'd take that as my inspiration and uh, build it up from there go for a sort of military theme almost tactical i think that's the look we're going for tactical so yeah i'll uh, come back to you once i've cut this down once i've trimmed these screws down and then we'll move to the actual mounting system at the back because that's not going to be just simple, straightforward, for two reasons. One, I tried buying some off-the-shelf stuff and nothing worked. Two, I'm a skin flint, so I wanted to use stuff that I'd got. No, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? You can't say, I bought some stuff, didn't work. And then, yeah, I wanted to use what I got. Ignore me, I'm babbling. It's the Queen's Jubilee, I'm so excited about it. Thrilled. That's why I'm at home playing with guns, not watching Trooping of the Colour. Fascinating. Anyway. Right, now what we need to do is cut the screws shorter, because as you could see they were too long. The way I'm going to do that is on my vernier. I've got a depth gauge on the back. So I'm going to drop that down into the hole. Read off the measurement, which in this case is 3.7, so I'm going to call that 3 millimeters. Then get your screw and your rail. You've got the screw sticking out, your finger on it to push, put pressure on. And then I'm going to measure where 3 millimeters comes to on that thread. It's sticking through, and then cut it accordingly. Now, I'm going to cut it using a hacksaw. What I'm going to do first, before I start cutting it, I'm going to wind a nut down onto the uh, the screw. So then you've got a decent thread when you're finished, because what you do is you cut it, you wind the nut off, and winding the nut off then repairs the end of the thread, so it'll go in. The reason why I'm cutting it at 3mm protrusion instead of 37 I just want a little gap. I don't want the end of the screw to be touching the barrel, so I want a little gap between the end of the screw and the barrel. So, see our mark there, I'm going to cut above that line, so I'm going to wind a nut on past it, there we go, clamp that in the vise, cut it off with a hacksaw, wind off the nut to repair the thread, and then we've got one out of uh, five done. Top ones are M4 and the underside are M5 by the way. So just so you know what you've got to stock up on. Ideally what you'd do is you'd work out all your lengths and everything and then order in the right size screw. And yeah, okay, I take that one on the chin completely. I'm trying to do it with what I've got knocking about because uh, money's a little bit tight at the moment. As I'm sure it is for everybody. I mean, what a... Sh I nearly swore then. What a rubbish situation we're all in. And now they're on about banning lead, for God's sake, in the uh, ammunition. So that's going to make it even more expensive for us. Yeah, just great. Thanks. Right, so it's one cut. So there we go. Cut. I'm going to do use a second cut file. Just neaten up the end. It's not really necessary, but. You know, sometimes it's for your own peace of mind, isn't it? Just like them to be squared off. 
There we go. Let's just wind this nut off. There we go. So now that, pop it through the rail. This is just a dry assembly, by the way. I am going to aluminium black all these uh, holes. Rifle. There we go. It's on. First one. Status update, that's the top and bottom rails fitted. I think it looks pretty funky myself. So I'm going for a tactical look with this gun. I will be doing these up by the way. Tight, now that it's all in position, I can actually tighten up these screws and clamp on them barrel bands. So now, what else are we gonna do? Well, as I mentioned, the rail on these, incredibly short, so ourselves a Picatinny rail adapter here. I'm sure you can all work out what the problem is with using something like this, even though it's, I mean, look at that. The length of it is absolutely perfect, but of course you're not gonna be able to get the magazine in and out. So what I'm gonna do is cut this to fit. Oh, why not? The fact is I've got it, I wasn't using it, so I may as well use it for something. I won't take you long for the process of cutting it, I'm sure you'll be able to work out what I've done and who wants to watch me cutting a bit of aluminium, eh? That's the first part completed. So I'll cut that so as it's got a mounting screw like that. Mount it up. Again, we'll have to do some aluminium black on the back end of it, but uh, that's no biggie. Well, there we go. Now a two piece Picatinny rail, cut, fitted. Should make it a lot easier. And the reason why I wanted to extend the base of this was I like the mounts to be spaced out evenly or as much as possible, and to be spaced along the tube as much as possible. So, oh, these Kozap rings are great, but they're a little bit awkward. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah, see? Awkward. There we go. No. Can't get in. There we go, now she's on. Another scope. This is a Richter Optic that was on the HW77K. So, yellow grey, looking pretty good. So I'll finish her up and then we'll do a little bit of adjusting and that'll be ready for the range. Well, here it is, finished item, scope on top. Got the Picatinny mount. There you can see that the scope is the scout mounts are now quite nicely spaced out. Got the uh, braces here, barrel bands, and their Picatinny rails to brace them out. Oh, okay, yeah, a lot of you are probably thinking it looks a bit silly. Uh, well, you know, it's all in personal taste, isn't it? I quite like it, sort of a military look. Because to me, with this um, quite blonde stock on it, the gun has sort of a military rifle look to it. If you think of something like an FN 49, something like that. So that's the sort of look I've been going for with it, really. I like it, and it's my gun. So there we go. Now, advantages. We, uh, I showed before a video with the eBay 3D printed magazines. So here's the standard magazine. Drops in. And with the previous setup, well, there you drop the magazine. Always good. 
I wasn't able to use the 3D printed magazines. Now, I've got so much height above it, I actually think the higher capacity 3D printed ones will fit. So that's something that uh, I'll look into and obviously I'll report back and let you all know. So, important thing, is this going to make it shoot any better? This is the science aspect, isn't it? Where these extra barrel bands, well fit in one anyway, a well-known modification to uh, improve the barrel positioning and flex. I mean, look, there's absolutely no movement in that now. Whereas before you could bend it. It was worse than an S400. So, well, we'll find out. We, we know that uh, best group she's given is three quarter inch. So next time I take her out, let's see if we can improve on those three quarter inch groups. Right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do want any more information on how I did each step, just drop a comment and ask. I'm quite happy to, uh, to give any more information. Purposely kept the video a bit shorter, purely because I don't want people getting bored. So yeah, if you want any more information, drop a comment. I'm doing my best to help out. If you like the video, if you could like, share and subscribe, that would be great. If you didn't like the video, okay, sure. Drop a little comment to say why, and then I'll endeavour to improve for next time. Don't just dis leave a dislike and don't say why, because it's just a bit pathetic, really. And you're not helping anybody, you're not helping me to improve. So what's the point in doing it? Right, anyway, enjoy the Jubilee weekend if you're a royalist. Not, then, well, put up with it. It's holiday. That's if you're in the UK. If you're abroad, drop a comment. Love to know where you're from. Right, cheers, bye.